Shalom, giving all praise to Yahweh Shema, Shabba, Shema Kakadash, Shalom to the hopeful elect out there. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to entitle this uh, video, The Most High. When I say the Most High, I'm talking about Yahweh Shema, Yahweh Shabba, Shema Kakadash. The Most High gave his secrets to the prophets only. The Most High gave his secrets to the prophets only. So what I did was I put up, a couple of days ago, I was gonna do this uh, video with this title. So I put together some precepts and then I put, last night I put together a couple more precepts. And um, so the spirit was on me to do it because I said I was gonna do it a couple of days ago, but I didn't. And like I said, I put I put some precepts together, as I said. So I said, let me go ahead and just do it and see where this this uh, video goes or takes me. So I'm basically going to the scriptures, explain the scripture or the precept, and then move on to the next scripture. So I want to open up with uh, Amos three verse seven. And I may want to read it. So I'm in the King James and I may go to uh, the NLT, maybe some other version. So it says uh, Amos 3 verse 7, surely the Lord or Yahweh most high will do nothing but or except he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Didn't say the kings, didn't say the generals, didn't say the captains, it didn't say the high priests. It said the prophets. Now in the New Testament, when you read the order of who the Mosai is dealing with, it starts with the apostles and the prophets come after that. So the, the apostles are also prophets. All of the apostles, when you read about Peter, Peter saw the destruction, Babylon being destroyed, and he spoke about it. The Apostle Paul saw it. John the Apostle saw it. So all the apostles, the apostles that you know they that that's written in in, in um, the New Testament. I'm talking about the apostles. They were they were prophets, and they were beyond prophets. Because, like I said, a prophet comes behind the, uh, an apostle. So I read it again. Surely, yeah, how the Most High will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, servants, the prophets. So there's more than one prophet out there. So let me go to the, uh, let me go to the NIV. Then I'll go to the NLT. Surely the sovereign Lord Yahweh doeth nothing without revealing, that's what the word revelation means to pull back the veil. Re and revelation means a back or pull back. And veil is veil, pull back the veil. Like I used this uh, example of uh, the uh, price, what is that? The price is right. They still play, you know, show it on TV, but uh, I'm talking about the original with Monty Hall. And um, they would have, uh, if you got, if you got to the end of the show, you got the person that got the highest prizes and they would play in that, uh, I think it was called a showcase round or something like that. And uh, they would say, uh, they would have three, it will always have three curtains. So those are the veils. So you didn't know what was behind them. They knew what was behind, but behind the curtains. Yeah, one an all exp expense paid trip to uh, Italy um, or a, a brand new car or a donkey. It usually was a donkey. So you would say, 
what is this? What do you, which one do you pick? Curtain number one, curtain number two, or curtain number three. And then the person's all nervous because they want the biggest prize, but they know that they can get a donkey. So what Monty Hall will do is say, look, I'll give you $1,000. Now, $1,000 back then, because that show first came out in the 70s, $1,000 back then would be, could be, I'm not, I'm not going into the exact math adjusted for inflation, but I can. It should be. Let's say ten thousand. Let's say it's worth about ten thousand back then. You can get ten thousand. It would be ten thousand today, adjusted for inflation. But that's just off my head. I haven't really did the adjustment. I could do the exact adjustment and tell you exactly how much you would get. But that's a little bit of a math formula that I, that I got to do to tell you exactly how much a thousand is. But let's say it was a thousand, uh, ten thousand. Thousand dollars is really nothing. You know, you can't shit. You can't even pay your rent. You know, uh, for a thousand dollars, you need more than a thousand dollars. If you're gonna live in a decent place, you're talking about uh, fifteen hundred, all the way up to three thousand. If you want to live in a decent decent area, starting prices like fifteen hundred. So, you know, back there in the 70s, you can rent a, a nice apartment for maybe 100 and change. Can you imagine that? You know, 100, uh, about 100, $150, $120. And they showed you in the movie uh, Godfather 2 with the old lady, the, the landlord was going to kick, kick her out for not paying the rent. And Don, Don Colleone, when he was a young man, he said he'll pick up the rent. He said, how much is the rent? And the guy, I remember the guy saying $5 a month. So $5 a, $5 a month, $5 went a long way. So anyway, she got the, uh, make a long story short, she got, uh, let me go to the point. So the person would say, um, they would either say, you know, if they're if they're um, level headed, they would say, "I'll take the thousand dollars, play it, play it safe." But a lot of but the but the crowd will egg you on. No, no, don't take the thousand. You might win the, 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 the brand new car, so they'll go for it. So they'll say, "Okay, give me give me uh, veil uh, curtain number two. So then uh, Monty Hall says the thousand dollars still stands. So you sure you want to go with curtain number two? Yes. Okay, so let's open curtain number one, a trip to Italy. Let's open curtain number three, a brand new car. So that you already know you got a donkey. So if, if, if the most high revealed it to you, if the most high said in the vision, when you go on this show, you might want the car. This, the spirit will show you in the vision that when the veil comes up, Veil number three, or curtain number three is going to be a brand new car or a trip to Italy, uh, ver, uh, curtain number one. So we're like the prophets of the Most High are like going on uh, the Price is Right. Is it called the Price is Right? Or the, let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. I'm sorry. Let's make a deal. And the Most High, pretty much we're on, we're on um, let's make a deal. And Monty Hall is the Most High. So in our case, the, the most high Monty Hall will whisper in our ears, pick, pick uh, curtain number three while nobody's looking. So then you'll be confident, say, give me th curtain number three. And it's a brand new car, right? So that's us. That's why we say things are going to happen. And we have, we're supremely confident that it's going to happen. We've been saying for years, about the UFOs, that there's going to be more UFO sightings. And it's to the point where you even have the federal government having uh, Senate 
meetings and gathered summits and so forth about UFOs. And now they're telling guys in the military, in the Air Force, they, they used to say, look, we, you didn't see nothing. Don't say nothing because they're going to put you in a straight jacket in the padded room and call you crazy, label you as crazy. You may give court martial. So they, they would see shit and not say shit. So now they're saying, look, if you see something, if you see so, uh, unidentified flying objects, say something, report it. So what they, when, since they started doing that, there's so many UFO sightings or UAP sightings, which is, uh, that's the English equivalent for UFO, which they use that term now, which they adopted it from uh, uh, England. And the power, the power seed is coming out of England. The dragon is coming out of England. They, they the one, they're the ones that put out the memos, right? So people are all, they don't know what it is. We don't know if it's aliens. We don't know if it's Russian technology. We don't know what, we know what it is. We know exactly what it is. We know it's the angels. Or the same thing goes for the, uh, the MOTB. That's why we say it so, we're, we're so confident and when we speak about it. So now you got other camps that say it's not talking about that, it's talking about this. But then they said that, let's say 10 years ago or more. That's back when it wasn't too much stuff coming out. That technology really wasn't out there. Guess what? The technology is out there already and people been getting, uh, you know, see hit. So these same guys that said 10 years ago, you know, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, that these guys are going off. And the, uh, General Netanyahu, like I said, uh, he said, uh, conspiracy theorists are generally nuts. Well, he speaks about con conspiracies too. Hey, conspiracy is when they brought us here to serve slavery, knowing that we're the Israelites, but failing to tell us that we're the Israelites. Because if they say you are the Israelites, the first thing we're going to say as a people is, let's say they get together, Esau, the top scholars and professors and the historians and the Bi uh, Bible experts and Bible teachers and professors, and they all get together, and all the experts and the Israeli government, and they say, you know, we got to tell the truth that the so-called Negroes West the end, Puerto Ricans and the people in the Americas are the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, close it up. Well, what are we going to say? What are we going to say? Because you believe, you be, see, so you know when you believe it, when the white man tells you that, that, that fact. That's when you niggas will start considering it, man, because you still have a slave mentality. But anyway, what if they tell us that? What is the first, what, what would be the first thing we're going to say? What, what the hell are these people doing over there in the land of Israel. And then we'll start reading the scriptures. Shouldn't you guys be our slaves? Am I right? So, like I said, if, es if Esau was to come out and say who we were, that's when Jake will start believing it. They'll bring out the charts and the data and the DNA you ain't going to listen to it when we say it, but that's all right. That's all right. Because if most I said, tell them whether they hear or forbid. Anyway, let me get back into this. I'm kind of all over the place. Let me read this again. Surely, Amos 3, verse 7, surely the sovereign Lord, Yahweh, do, do, does nothing without revealing, pulling back the veil, his plan. What is the plan? The plan, you, 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 uh, you are, uh, what, what is it, what is it, uh, the, the saying is something to, uh, you plan your execution, then you execute your plan, or something like that. So before you do something, you plan it. If you're going on a trip with the family, right, you got to plan it. You got to get the tickets. You got to know how many, how long you're going to be out there. You got to know if you got enough money to cover you being out there. If you're going to another country, you got to know what the exchange rate is. You may have to know a little bit of language. Um, and you got to deal with the travel. You got you to plan it. 
You don't just get up and say, let's go to this country. The, the money out there could be, your, your dollar could be worth half of that. And you realize you, you broke out there in another country. So a plan is something that you do beforehand, right? That you're gonna execute in the future. So it said revealing his plan to his servants and prophets, nobody else. So let me go to uh, the NLT. Let's see what the NLT says. Amos 3, verse 7 in NLT. Indeed, the sovereign Lord, Yahweh, never does anything until he reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. So the question is, who are the prophets on the earth? We have to be the prophets because we're, how do, what, what does the prophet do? What does the word prophet mean or prophecy or preach? The word preach, the root word of preach means prophet. Pre and a, the, the pre meaning before and the, uh, the, um, like the preach, the rest of the word, like pre, preach is to say before. It means to say before. I'm, I should go into it. If you go to the uh, etymology, it should tell you that. A preacher is somebody that's going to say something that's going to happen. So anytime somebody says, I'm a preacher, he's saying he's a prophet. He's saying he's a prophet. So the word prophecy, pro meaning to before, and fise means to say something. So prophecy means to say something that's going to happen before it happens. Because you receive divine intervention from the Lord. So now you got all these individuals that, you know, they got the men that came out of one West that learned from the seven. And the seven are not in this thing no more. Some of them are up, up in age. Some of them went to the spiritual world. So they're not in the forefront. The seven is not in the forefront anymore. It's us that came up under the seven that are in the forefront right now. So the spirit of the prophets was on them. Now the spirit of the, of the prophecy or the prophets is, are on us. So we're the, we're the authorities. You can't say, well, the seven said this. Look, we're the, we're the authorities right now. Unless the Mosai brings the seven back together, we are the authorities. And any other seven that went to the spiritual realm, they're coming back in their order. So we're the, we're the prophets. So now you got, you went on YouTube, right? The, the, the guys, that, the people that went on YouTube were my GMS, IUIC, ISUPK, um, AOC, uh, Priest Daniel Lines of Israel, HODC, uh, uh, GOCC. These, these people are formerly uh, from One West. That's why Vocab refers to us as a former One Westers. Now, you got a lot of people, a lot of different groups out there that were never part of One West, never stepped foot in the school, never stepped foot in Harlem, never lived in Harlem, never, never visited Harlem, nowhere near the school. And they're out there doing their thing. But what are they both mostly doing? If they just watched a couple of a handful of videos, maybe some IUIC videos, maybe some GMS videos, maybe some ISUPK and so forth and so on. And then they go out and they might teach something that we teach. They may or may not teach about the MOTB. The majority of them, um, they say that the, the MOTB is not, you know, the, the, the CHIP. And why do they say that? Maybe because they didn't really want to follow a Gen IGM that's ain't got it. I, I got to go with Bishop Nate. Well, any of you, and we got it right, and in, 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 in a matter of time, it's going to be fully manifested. It's already manifested, but it's going to be fully manifested. Then when that, when that happens, then it shall be known that a prophet has been before you. Then you're going to know who the prophets are. 
then it shall be known who are my chosen. That's in 2nd Ezra, Ezra uh, 16. Then it shall be known who are my chosen, who are my elect, elect meaning chosen, who are my prophets, who are my servants, who are, who are my spiritual men that I gave this, these secrets to. Like I said, you're going to find out when they actually do the breaking news and you got to actually get a chip in you, then you're going to realize, oh shit, GMS was right. That's when you're going to realize. So anyway. Let me get to that. Let me bring this back. So now I'm going to give you these precepts here. So we're going to go into the apocrypha. The apocrypha. Okay, I'm going right to the point. Oh, by the way, 2nd Ezra 12 is referring to the Roman Empire. When Esau ruled the Roman Empire. The last ruler was uh, the younger brother of, uh, of Titus and the, and the younger son of uh, Vespasian. That's what that's talking about. That's what this, this whole chapter covers. 11th chapter, 12th chapter. It has nothing to do with America. You got guys out there, uh, this is talking about America. Well, I was talking about Rome, but this is talking about, no, there's, there's no mention of America in 2nd Ezra's 11 or 2nd Ezra's 12. It's talking about the Roman Empire. When Esau ruled, then Jake took over, 96 AD. So let me read this. It says, uh, for the rest of my people shall he deliver with mercy those that have been pressed upon my borders, which is the land of Israel. And he shall, because at that time we were in Israel, the only time of Ezra, right in writing this book. And he shall make them joyful until the coming of the day of judgment. The coming of the day of judgment ultimately is when this place goes down. Whereof I have spoken unto thee from the beginning. This is the dream that thou sawest, and these are the interpretations. Thou only have been meet or good to know his, this secret of the highest. So what, what did that make Ezra's? Ezra's was a priest he came out of the, the direct lineage of Aaron. He was a priest or high priest and a prophet. Sometimes you have priests that are just priests. They said, therefore, write all these things that thou hast seen in a book and what? And hide them. And hide them. So this goes hand in hand with what? Daniel 12, around about the third, fourth verse. And another one is Revelation 5, the book being sealed. It said, Thou only hath been meet to know this secret of the highest. Therefore, write all these things that thou hast seen in a book. Let me do this. Let me go to view chapter.
36 again. Thou only has been meet to know this secret of the highest. Why was it given to Ezra? Because he was a prophet. Therefore, write all these things that thou hast seen in a book and hide them and teach them to the wise of the people. Who are the wise of the people? The fellow prophets whose hearts thou knowest may comprehend and keep these secrets. So now the Most High gave us these secrets, right? These prophecies. And he told us to go out there on the highways and the byways. It speaks about being bid, bidden to the marriage, meaning we're telling you that you're Israelites. Ezekiel, third chapter, eat this robe, go and teach the, the sons of Israel. Revelation 10, you shall prophesy again before many kings. Uh, tongues, nations, and so forth. So the Most High gave us these secrets and he said, you know what? I gave you all these secrets. You know what I want you to do now? I want you to tell the, tell the people that the, that the, the, of these secrets. Tell them what the scriptures is um, it's actually talking about. Give them the understanding of the scriptures. But then the Most High said, but guess what? I'm going to make it where they can't understand it. And they're gonna come up. They're gonna come against you. Hey, when you had uh, the IUIC do a church blitz, blitz, who did they come at? Who? What? What? One person came out of that church. Not, not one, not one of them. You know what they got? They got shoes thrown at them by women. They got, they got guns pulled out on them. They got chased down. They got cursed out. They didn't get one. Now, if they did get one, let me know. I'll, I'll change it up. I said, okay, you got one. No, we actually got two, Taha. Okay, you got two. Out of how many thousands of people did you confront and stay out there for two, three hours for nothing? Like I ultimately said, I'm not knocking them for going out there, but I am knocking them for trying to... The, the scriptures speak about if they don't accept your peace, take your peace back to you. I'm merely paraphrasing uh, perhaps partially quoting uh, Matthew's 10, and it says, shake the dust off your feet. You there arguing back and forth, like my grandmother would say, yeah, you there arguing. Quit, stop all that arguing. A two-syllable word. <laughs> it says, uh, so let's go to the next precept. Second Ezra uh, 14, verse 5. Let's see what that says. You can't be, you can't play a prophet. You got a lot of guys out there. They're not prophets. They just play prophets on YouTube. That's a, that's a title right there. They are not prophets. They play prophets on YouTube. A lot of these guys come out there and they hit them precepts and, you know, they got the Edomites kissing their boots, not realizing that that, that Edomite could be an Israelite. Okay, this is the this is the verse that I want. Let me just look into the context of it. Oh, you know what? I'll start from the. Uh, you can read from the second verse, actually from the first verse, but I'll go right to the fifth verse. I may jump back up. It says, and told him, you know what, let me start from the, uh, uh, this is the A verse. Let me start from uh, the first verse. The second Ezra chapter 14, verse one. And it came to pass upon the third day, I sat on an oak 
and behold, there came a a voice out of a bush over against me and say, Esdras, Esdras. And I say, here, here am I, Lord. And I stood up upon my feet. Now that's what was told to uh, a Samuel with the priest Eli. Because the Lord was calling him, but he didn't know who it was. And Eli knew and said, next time he calls, say, here I am, Lord. It says, uh, then said he unto me, in the bush I did manifest, manifestly reveal myself. Now, the Most High had a special relationship with uh, Moses or Masha. It tells you that in Numbers uh, chapter, what is it, chapter uh, Numbers 12, I believe. It was Numbers 12. I'm not going to go to it. I believe it's Numbers 12, verse 10. Matter of fact, now, now I got to go to it. Getting old, getting old here. Getting old. Numbers 12. I believe it's Numbers 12 and 10 is the point. Yep, it was Numbers 12 and 10. So the, mur the murmuring of Miriam and Aaron. So this is what the most the most high said concerning. And Miriam was the ultimate nigga woman. Look, I'm now I'm older than both of y'all. I changed your diapers, Moses. You won't listen to me. The hell you doing? Marrying this woman of another nation. Most I got mad. He didn't he didn't he didn't do anything to to to, to uh Aaron. He uh, he did it. He he did what he had to do to marry because she was a woman. Women don't have no, you know. Hey, I was listening to uh, or I did a video. Priest Daniela was on uh, Sarnetta's show, and his wife was on there with him. She came in after because I was watching some more of it, and uh, and I'll get back into the subject. And um, Sarnetta was going into certain scriptures about when you go to war and you get the other nations. He, he, he mentioned uh, Deuteronomy uh, 21, verse 10. And then he did maybe mentioned a couple other scriptures and said that we take these women. And uh, not so many words, Priest Daniela said, well, we didn't do that. We didn't. Now, that's, that's an exception to the rule. We didn't go take a woman from us. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. The, there was Israelite men that were 18 years old, 19, that couldn't wait to hit 20 so they can be a part of, of the, the army of Israel. Because what, what, what did you get out of that? You got spoils, you got gold, you got silver, you got valuable things, and then you got women. You got women. So they went, part of going to war was, we get the, we get the spoils, that's what it means. The spoils of war, part of the spoils of war was always a woman. You would get the beautiful woman, you know, the father be killed, the mother be killed, and you'll, you'll, you'll have your men, look, guard this woman, guard this woman right here. Then you might get five women, and then you bring them to your house, and then you, but now that's, that's, where it's a, that's the law, don't just rape her. Don't just rape her. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's another topic right there. Don't just rape her, even if she's of another nation. It says you got to let her mourn for 30 days. And then when you put off the clothes of her, uh, of, of what's, what is it, uh, the clothes of thy cap captivity. In other words, you're putting Israelite clothes on her. You're, you're making her Israelite, even though she's not an Israelite. And then you're popping her, and then you're having children with her. And guess what? Those children ain't coming out half Midian night, half Israelite. Them children are coming, coming out 100% Israelites. They might look a little different from other. Look, we look different from, from every, we, we look like every nation on the planet because we done dropped our seed on every nation on the planet. So you're going to see Israelites looking like straight up Moabites, man. 
So when you read about uh, Gideon, he had uh, many concubines. He had children with his concubines. So we look forward to men with practicing. It says teach Judah the use of the bow, right? Why, why do the fathers have to teach the sons? Because when they hit that, when they hit age 20, they're going to actually go out to war. So when they went out, they didn't have to go to boot camp. The boot camp was with their father. Their father showed them war. So when they went out to war, they, they knew what, to, what they had. To, and by the way, they, Israel always fought, for the most part, guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla, where do you think Esau learned about guerrilla warfare? He learned it from Gad and Reuben. They were the warriors, Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh. And they call it guerrilla warfare. Well, you don't just march in like uh, the Civil War. They would just line up and march in and shoot at each other and not block bullets or dodge bullets. They just shoot each other and just drop dead. That was stupid. They showed you that in the movie. Uh, what was the goddamn name of the movie? It was uh, Mel Gibson did it. The Patriot, I think it was called. And there was a scene where he was fighting a whole army by himself. What do you think he was doing? He was fighting like Gad and Reuben and Manasseh. That's called guerrilla warfare. And that's how Gad fought. They didn't, they, they didn't, look, Gad were all, they were all experts in war. The scriptures tell you that. So they, so they were taking out men from different angles, man. You didn't know where the hell they were coming from. There could have been 20 of them, and you thinking that there's, there's 120 of them. So that's what war was all about. And like I said, you, the spoils that you got was whatever you fucking caught. If you caught, caught some woman from another nation, you know, if you caught women from another nation, you, you take them home, and that's your spoil. And you can also sell them. You can sell those women of another nation to another Hebrew. Hebrew men can sell their daughters to other Hebrew men, and, and then she has no rights. Well, she has rights under the law of the Most High. But she can't say, well, I don't like this guy. I don't want to be his servant. No, you got to be a servant. And he can decide to make you a servant, or he can decide to make you a wife. Now, if he makes you a wife, if he wifes you, he's got to bring you up to that status of being a wife. See, there's a difference between a, a wife and a concubine. You also watch that movie, The Last Emperor of China. I think it's called The Last Emperor or The Last Emperor of China. Excellent movie, if you can get it. If you go to YouTube, you're going to have to pay, pay for it because it's a classic movie. Now, in the movie, this this more by kid was raised up to be the king as an infant. So they were just serving this guy. And um, when he hit about 10, 11 years old, he had concubines. And there was one part where there's one part of the movie where he was depressed and his concubine was standing and she looked like an Ephraimite. She was a Moabite, but she looked like an Ephraimite with big titties. And he got a little de depressed and then he looked at her and she pulled, she pulled the titty out and he just started sucking on a titty. Why? Because she's a concubine. And she was an older woman. That, she was an experienced woman in the art in, as far as sex is concerned. You know, there's a saying, it's good to be the king. It says, uh, let me go right to the point. Forgive me, I'm a little all over the place. I'm going right to the point. I'm not talking about the leprosy part. Okay, let me start at six. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, the, the Lord, I, the Lord, will make, make myself known unto him in a vision, vision, dream, and will speak unto him in a dream. Dream, sometimes you have dreams, right? But sometimes you wake up and you know that was a vision. My servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth. 
even apparently and not in dark speeches and this uh and the similitude of the lord shall uh, yahweh shall be shall he behold wherefore then where were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the Lord, Yahweh, cursed, Yahweh by Shemuel Shai, cursed out Miriam and said, look, you're talking shit about my servant? That's my servant. You you are nobody. Let me tell you something about the prophets. I speak to the prophets in dreams and in visions. But with Moses, he's special. I just speak to him. So he doesn't have to wonder who's speaking to him or it was a bad dream or the most high can the most high came to him in a burning bush. Do you know that there's an actual burning bush? There's a there's a there's a plant, a bush that that you 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 catch it, you uh, put it on fire, it doesn't burn. It got it has oils in it. If you go to if you go to my let me see, I'm not gonna go to it, but it's on my page. Uh on this video, on this uh YouTube page. I believe if you put in a gas plant, I believe it comes up. A Moses gas plant. And that's an actual plant. That when you cat when you put fire to it, it doesn't burn. It 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 it, it flames up. Because there's gas in the leaves. So that so that so people say, well, that's impossible. How can a a, a plant or a bush stay on fire and not be consumed? Well, they have a gas plant. Look it up. So now let's come back over here. So this is what this is what Yahweh is Yahweh Bashim Al Shai is telling telling um Ezra. Then said he unto me in a bush, I did manifest myself, reveal myself unto Moses, and talk with him. When my people served in, not a word there is Mizraim. Not a word, Egypt is a Greek word, but the word Mizraim actually means to bond, to hold and bond. It means bondage. It translates into the word bondage, loosely translated. It says, and I sent him and led my people out of Egypt uh, and brought him up to the mount where I of where I held him by me a long season. It was a 40, he had to go on a fast for 40 days and told him many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of times and the end. So was Moses a prophet? Yes, he was a, pro he was a prophet and he was also a king and he was a god unto Pharaoh. And Aaron was his prophet. So what do you, what do you, what is it meant by? He showed him the secrets of the times, and the end. He showed him this destruction. That's also spoken spoken about by Moses. He saw the end. He saw the missiles hit hit this place, which became a lake of fire, and commanded him saying, "These words shalt thou declare, and these." Shalt thou hide? And, and now I say unto thee that thou lay up in thy heart, thy mind, the signs that I have showed and the dreams that thou hast seen and the interpretations which thou hast heard. I don't got to read anymore. But this is this this is a this is a good, a, a excellent uh, chapter. I'm not gonna read. I'm not gonna read anymore though. Matter of fact, I'm sorry. I am gonna read it more. I'm gonna jump down. But you can read the whole chapter. So let me read the fifth verse again. It says, I, and, and told him many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of the times. He also showed Solomon the beginning of times, the middle of times, and the ending of times. And the end, and commanded him, saying, let me jump down to the 26th verse, 
And when thou has and when thou has done, some things shalt thou publish, and some things shalt thou show secretly to the wise. Tomorrow, this uh, this hour shalt thou begin to write. So there are certain people that's going to get these scriptures and other people ain't going to get it and they're going to fake it. They're going to say it means that. That's why they tell us we're going off on this. Look, the MOTB, we got it right. And they got it wrong. Why do they got it wrong? Because they're not, not, they're not prophets. Because the most I would have gave them the same information that he gave us if we were, if we were all prophets. So let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 721. Wisdom of Solomon 721. Let's see what that says. This is Solomon talking, which is Yahweh Shai. And all such things as are either secret or manifest them I know. Why did he say that? Because he was the son of the Most High. Solomon is Yahweh Shai. Came back as Yahweh Shai. Solomon was also Melchizedek. Or Yahweh Shai yeah, was Melchizedek. Isaac was also, I mean, uh, Yahweh Shai was also Isaac. That's why he was almost sacrificed because ultimately, he became sacrificed. Next precept, Ecclesiasticus 48, verse 25. And like I said, you can read a couple of verses. You can click on context. Or you can read the whole chapter. It says he showed he showed what should come to pass forever, and secret things, or ever they came. So if you're a prophet, then you you see the uh, the end of things. You know what's going to happen in the end. You know that that the, the majority of the, of the planet is going to get microchipped, and um, you know that this destruction is going to come. And the government be watching it. They watch our videos, man, because they know they know what the UFOs are. They know that they're the angels, and they've been watching. That's why they've been watching. They ain't mentioning us. Next precept, Second Ezra ten, verse thirty-eight. He answered me then and said, hear me, and I shall inform thee and tell thee wherefore thou art afraid and the highest will reveal many secrets, secret things unto thee. So Ezra was a special man to the Most High. Let me read that again. I shall inform thee and tell thee Wherefore thou art afraid, for the highest will reveal many secrets, secret things unto thee. So the most high reveal many secret things unto us because we're the prophets. There's going to be a time where See, for a lot of you out there that watch our videos, for that matter, watch IUIC, IUCBK, all these different other, other camps out there and these different groups, Kari and them. And a lot of y'all are entertained by it. You, you're entertained. It's entertainment for you. It's like your favorite show. You know, when um, That's My Mama. Um, I'm thinking of some old shows. Good Times. There's certain shows as kids 
you would run home to see that show, right? And your parents is all in, in the show, them, them black shows. Sanford and Son, when it, when it first came out, I believe it was on Channel 2, if I'm not mistaken, because the stuff that we saw was like re reruns. Chico and the Man, all them good shows. Barney Miller, that was an excellent show. Excellent writers. All them various different shows. You you rush home. Oh, when we were kids, when I was living in, 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 in the Bronx, when we were like 10, 9, 8 or whatever, anytime there was a movie on Elvis Presley, everybody, Elvis Presley music, another Elvis Presley movie. We go, go see Elvis Presley, man. Everybody's in their house watching Elvis Presley. Or the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. Everybody was in the house. Because we had a, a spiritual connection with spiritual things dealing with the scriptures, man. I remember Sundays, everything was dead. Everything was dead. There was not one store open. You couldn't sell nothing. Everything was closed. That's before the supermarket era. So let me read this. Second Ezra uh, 5 verse 9. So coming back to what I was saying, your favorite show, uh, to a lot of y'all, this is entertainment. You're entertained by it. There's going to be a time where you're going to take this thing serious and you're going to be watching it to get real answers. When it comes to pass, watch how many people, when they make that, when they make that announcement, and they say everybody got to get them uh, the sea hip by the end of this month. If not, you cannot get on the train. You cannot. You can you can't drive your car because you can't get gas because you need a chip for that. You can't go to the store. That's when you're going to be going to the uh, the web and getting answers from us and asking us what's this all about when we've been when we've been saying it. So after a while, this is not going to be your favorite entertainment. So let me read this precept. Second Ezra 5, verse 9. And shall waters, and salt waters shall be found in sweet. It's talking about now. You should read this whole chapter. As second Ezra 5, second Ezra 6, second Ezra 4, second Ezra 13. And all friends shall destroy one another. Because when, when, when the food shortages and stuff happen. They're going to be going to their neighbors looking, to, looking for food. Then shall, then shall wit hide itself. What is wit? Wisdom. So the thing that makes you wise. If, you, if you're a witty person, that means you're a smart, wise, intelligent person. It said wit shall hide itself, meaning knowing what to do. And understanding withdraw itself into his secret chamber. That's the, um, what do you call that? The, damn, I can't, uh, I can't even think of the precept, and we say it all the time. A famine of the word. That's what that's talking about, famine of the word. Because people, they, they only, they only, then, oh, when they cut off the internet, then you, you, there's no place you can go to to get the news. So when you watch these these shows, you better take notes and you better take this thing seriously, man. And you better ask the most high where you stand in this thing. Because if you're a prophet, if you're a servant of the most high, you're supposed to be, we're at the home stretch of this thing. You're supposed to be putting, putting up constant videos. Uh, you're supposed to be out there, out there on the highways and the byways, preferably on like a Saturday or maybe on a Sunday. And you should be into this thing. You got some guys, they slick. They'll come out, they'll go to the camp, and then the rest of the week, they're a nigga. They ain't thinking about Israel. They, they just a nigga. Next precept. Back in the scriptures. The secret things belong unto Yahweh, our power, our, our power, our God. 
but those things which are revealed, revelation, the word revelation means to, to pull back the veil, belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the work, the words of this law. So now among the children of Israel, the most high has only given these secret these secrets unto the uh, chosen elect, which are, which are the prophets. So if you're a prophet, your job is to prophesy. There's one guy recently, he just fell off. He was in this thing for years. And he just, he, he just said, I'm not with this no more. He just woke up one day, I'm not with this. I'm not doing this thing no more. So this is a sifting too. That's in Amos 9. Judges 13, verse 8, 18. Let's see what that says. And the angel of Yahweh said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So that certain angels are not going give to you, give you their name. That's not their job. The angels don't want you to bow down to them. That's uh, uh, Revelation uh, 19. The angel in Revelation 19 at John said, I'm my, I'm my, I am thy fellow servant and brother. So now, is the Most High's name a secret? No. So if you are Israelite, if, especially if you're from one west, you should clearly know the name of Yahweh, the Most High, and his son Yahweh Shai. Job, uh, Job 15 and 8. Let's see what that says. Has thou heard the secret of the Most High? If you're a prophet, you're going to hear it. You're going to understand it. And do and dost thou retain wisdom to thyself? Now, what does that mean? You can know secrets of the, of, the, of the Most High. You can know the scriptures, and then you can fall off. But what does the Most High do? He takes it away from you. That's why these guys that got kicked out and fell off and went back into the world, the guys that go back in the 90s and the 80s and the 2000s uh, that was part of the original One West, you guys that went back into the world, you know what you're going to do? You're going to do two things. You're going to ultimately take that karagma. If you live that long, the best thing you might do, the best thing you know, for you is maybe thinking about putting your house in order. And you know what I mean by that? Because it's going to be bad. You're going to, you're going to take, you're going to take the karagma and um, you're going to eat a missile or two. Real talk. Because you ain't thinking about the, the destruction. You, you, you don't even call this place Babylon no more. This is America. You went back to being a Baptist or whatever religion that you was a part of. You went back. Some of y'all went back to eating pork, shrimp. It was like you was never in this thing. Right? It, it says in uh, Second Peter, uh, what is that? Two, starting from the 20th verse, 22nd verse, dog returning back to his vomit. And that vomit is uh, what you did in the past. So you ain't, you ain't worried about the missiles coming because you don't think hey, you don't think the missiles are coming. And and to be honest, you don't even believe in the Most High. You're a bunch of atheists because you don't fear the Most High. If you believe the Most, there's a supreme power of the Scriptures spoken of in the Scriptures. You would fear the Most High. You ain't doing His will. So you don't fear the Most High because you don't believe that there's a Most High. You've been in America too goddamn long. Oh, everybody's going to get shook up on that when that time comes. The time of Jacob's trouble. Job 29 verse 4. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of the Most High was upon my tabernacle. 
So Job, the Most High was dealing with Job from the time he, that he was a youth. The Apostle Paul said, and, and from a child, let me bring that up. Let me bring that up. Let's see what comes up here. Second Timothy three verse fifteen, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Yahamashiach, Yahawashiach. This is Psalm 91. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to read a couple of verses. This is one of my favorite chapters. And this right here goes hand in hand with uh, Revelation chapter 18. In a nutshell, this chapter is talking about when the Lord and the angels, Yahweh and the angels come back, deliver the elect of Israel and destroy this place. It says, only with thine eyes shall thou behold the reward of the wicked. And some of the wicked are wicked Israelites. <laughs> it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power, and him will I trust. So when they go to give out those sea hips, a lot of y'all, well, okay, I got kids and my wife, she bugging out. And my, my mother, she bugging out. This, that, and the third. And they, they say they're going to get it anyway because they don't believe that they're Israelites. Well, guess what? If they go ahead and get it, you can't get it. You're going to have to let faith kick in. Well, how are you going to eat? Trust in the most high. Did not, did not Elijah, was he not fed? Did, did the children, the sons of Israel, in the wilderness, was they not given manna from heaven? What is it saying, Isaac, um, Isaiah uh, 65 and 12? You can start from 9. That my servant shall eat. So that's when faith kicks in. We get last last two uh, precepts, and I'm gonna close it. But when I know I, I went a little long, and I rambled a little bit, I went on my rant. So forgive me for that. Uh, Psalms 25 verse 14: The secret of Yahweh is with them that fear Him. Didn't I just say that? So if you truly fear Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, He and you're a prophet. Well. Let's say this. If you're a prophet, you're going to fear Yahweh Basham Yahushai. Or one of the elect. You're going to fear Yahweh Basham Yahushai. It said the secret of Yahweh Basham Yahushai is with them that fear him, and he shall show them his what? His covenant. The beginning of the covenant was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. The completion of the covenant is going to be fulfilled when this destruction comes and we and we're beamed up at the last trump. Last precept and I'm gonna close. Psalm 31, verse 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy present presence from the pride of man thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues so when all hell breaks loose the time of Jacob's trouble if you're a, a prophet or one of the elect of the Lord a servant of the Lord you're going to be good anyway with that I'm going to say Shalom